she would begin bringing huge baskets of leaves and vegetables and roots and herbs, you know, baskets and baskets, and just have them there on the table and invite everybody just to be quiet and look and see what's in front of them. And there's a celery leaf and there's a beetroot and there is a few nuts and there is, a, you know, and there is the red colours of a pepper and there's this and there's that. And just experiencing it visually. And then the cooking, touching, cutting, how things go together, the movements, then the colours, then the, and then all the time stories. She would tell stories in between of, uh, of especially in relation to Jewish mysticism, which is her, her world. And, um, and then uh, they would be eating of it. And the whole thing was like three hours of extraordinary interest and richness and so on, based on cooking one meal. And eating it together. And, eating it together. and she's still in that world. And, and I cook, used to cook Indian food a lot in, at home. I don't do that so much because Rachel so loves to cook every day, so I don't have any place. I'm just doing the washing up. But it doesn't matter. I'm part of the story. The creativity there is huge. Um, so it, it, there's a joy in that and a well-being. There's a well-being if you discover things rather than having a, a principle of denying what not doesn't really bring a lot of joy but what is and the, the discovery process brings a lot of joy and harmony and relationship so there is joy in this and I want to um, introduce a, a, a Buddhist concept which is very similar to sattva in the uh, uh, Sanskrit or the Indian concept. And the Buddhist concept is called Kusala. Now Kusala is something that the monks, in the Buddhist monks till today, in Thailand and Cambodia and so on, they talk about it non-stop. Non-stop. Because they're very busy with how they are, with things. They're very busy with action in the monasteries, how to act right. <coughs> they have a lot of principles <coughs> and uh, kind of <coughs> monastic rules that they keep. But Kusala is a kind of thread running. It's very similar to Sattva, but it's a Buddhist concept. And it's the, the best translation into English of Kusala, and why it's very relevant to this, this topic, is um, wholesome. Wholesome in English means nutrition and it means harmony and it means non-harming and it means beneficial and it's on the level of body and mind and on the level of spirit. So what is wholesome for example nutritional on the level of spirit is for example, meditation. Meditation is wholesome, nutritional, on the level of our inner life. So it's seen in a rather different way from meditation is a technique for, uh, for uh, uh, opening doors and, and uh, wisdom and liberation, but also meditation is a way of relating nu nutrition, feeding the soul, if you like, Along, and so many other things too. Now the, Buddha, the Buddhist teaching doesn't have a good and a bad. It doesn't have evil. There's no evil in the Buddhist teaching. There's no... Uh, there's, the, 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 the teaching doesn't go in that direction. That's a Western Christian, Judeo-Christian. The Buddhist language is different. It's what do you feed in the person? And what do you not feed? So feeding would be feeding the bigness of spirit, feeding ethical behavior. A spiritual practice is a feeding your freedom rather than feeding your sense of being on, 
automatic pilot, just functioning in life and being suffer and suffering. You feed the joy, you feed the peace, you feed liberation and inner freedom, and you don't feed attachments, um, difficult habits. Uh, um, unethical things you just don't feed them but you don't give yourself a hard time so those people it, 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 there isn't blame blame is not encouraged in the Buddhist teaching because it's not nutritional it's negative so instead of for example blaming someone that eats meat you would maybe feed that part of them that knows uh, non-harming already because they're also a human being so they already know not something about peace and not harming so you'd feed that side of them rather than blame them for eating meat and those of you who have par parents and your story you know who have close relations who uh, eat meat and you want to in a way support that so you encourage the goodness in their spirit with kindness uh, rather than blame that they helping to kill cows and it, 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 it's what do you feed it, so it's very much in this world that we're talking about it's very fitting kusala akusala is what is not um, akusala is what is not wholesome or harmonious or healthy or non-violent or ethical, ethically wise and all the time akusala akusala in every moment every thought of ours Every word we speak, every action we do, can go in wonder at this kusala or akusala. Can be helpful, can reduce suffering in the world, or can be non-helpful, cause suffering, cause more difficulty, cause pain, cause more ignorance and closing ourselves, or opening, or wisdom. And every thought is kusala or akusala. It gets very, very subtle. So I just want to introduce that so much part of this whole dialogue. So, in, you know, that we have to be vegans from love. Feed the love, rather than be vegan through blame, or anger, or anger against others that don't, aren't vegan. Uh, because kusala, it's helpful, love is helpful, and anger just goes into the world and makes more problems. So it's, there's no point in we actually making damage by being vegan and being angry with everyone who eats meat. Instead of that, we are going for harmony and kindness and, um, and wholesomeness. Or, um, a, a, one small thing about health, that the research does show that vegans are the more healthy than meat eaters all the way through. And most of the diseases that affect the modern world, which include heart disease, cancer, arthritic diseases, um, chronic diseases, and that's your department, Isaac, too. Um, the chronic diseases that affect Western society are hugely, hugely less in vegans. So it's a huge difference, like dramatic difference. Vegetarians also, but less. But those vegans have a major, major uh, reduction in their risk of getting these kinds of d diseases that are the major killers of the Western world. So it's really, really clear. Yeah, but is it, is it I tell you, heart disease, uh, uh, blood pressure, um, cancer, uh, uh, cholesterol. cholesterol. But cholesterol is a source of disease, it's not the disease, but the basically uh, blocked arteries. Uh, Statistically? Yes, lots of research on this. Yeah, widening up population of yes, patients. yes, yes. And, but this research, I mean, I was doing, I was involved in this in 1972, 73, and there was already research then. 
So you, there's been 40 years since then of research. So it's really there. It's well, very, very well established. Um, so um, uh, just to, to emphasize, and uh, just to emphasize in one sentence, because I think I've said it before, but the health, the vegan diet is fundamentally health, more healthy than any other diet, but you absolutely need the knowledge. The knowledge can be cultural, and I think that, you know, uh, around what you, um, what you were saying before about it's in your environment to cook vegetables and so on and so on, uh, it, that's part of our knowledge. We're beginning to collect knowledge from each other. So it, 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 you, you say it's not a problem, you, you know, the food is around and you eat vegetables and it's rather natural for you because you've got a natural an environment that's already supporting this. But quite a lot of people don't necessarily have that knowledge and they need to, they need to get it. For example, one of the most problematic things is uh, oils. So you think oils, no problem. Nuts. But, well, the problem is purified oils. One of the most problematic things in health is, uh, is sh shmanim is oils that are industrial oils. Like you buy in the supermarket for cheap oil, which is processed and purified, don't touch it. <laughs> it is not healthy to eat purified, processed oils. And, uh, and it's very cheap. So people think, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with oil. I cook, uh, fry and uh, okay, it won't kill you, but it, 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 if you ask what's the, one of the most problematic things in a diet is actually the quality of the oils that you go into your mouth. And it's something that you need to learn about and it needs some, some exploration. So that's more or less what I want to say. And, and to summarize, just let that, you know, the decision about being a vegan to be the beginning and not the end. To be the beginning of a doorway into a life of responsibility. Responsibility, I like the English word, response ability. <laughs> ability to respond. The way we are with our life. To really use the, this as the doorway to begin to look at all the aspects of our life, how we are intimate with others, other beings that we share this home, planet with, this and ourselves and the world around us and the, the, what we support, what we feed both in our inner life and in our society, whether we support sort of industrial foods and if we support what we support. And it's, it's a sense of um, mothering actually. We can find ourselves being quite in a place where ethically we are um, mothering. We are like a mother. And um, that's a concept also from the Buddhist teaching, that we are like a mother to all beings, looking after and caring all other, for all other beings through compassionate action. And we can feel that movement as a positive movement in our way of life, rather than the negative, I won't eat that. It's the positive that we're talking about, the, the movement that enriches our life and through the sense of intimacy of being with others and humans and animals and ourselves and the world and the society, this sensitivity and awareness and mindfulness and heartfulness um, is, uh, is the basis. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, I think, what I want to say at this point. So let's just take one moment to, of quietness and then we can have some questions and discussions.